If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So for 2018's Mission Inspiration Challenges, I wanted to work in one journal, just one dedicated journal. And I decided that I was going to make one. Now, I did mention previously in one of my vlogs um, that I'd created some covers ready to decorate. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera and then I'll show you the kind of thing that I want to use to decorate the front and the back for this mission inspiration journal for this year. So these are the front and the back covers for my journal. Uh, eight inches by eight inches if you're wondering and it's grey grunge board that was on the back of one of my watercolour cardstock pads that I purchase. I always save the backs because it's fantastic stuff. So I also have two sheets of vintage newspaper, um, French, Le Mans, or possibly even Canadian, I'm not really sure. So this is actually the front and this is the back. The holes are going to go that way, so that's where the binding is going to go. So I'm going to glue these two sheets down onto the front. So I'm going to start off with a base of vintage newspaper, French vintage newspaper to be precise or in French anyway. Um, and then I'm going to use a collection of ephemera. So I've gone through my ephemera collection and pulled out a big pile of all kinds of different things that I want to use on the front and on the back. For the inside, when I've actually folded all this paper, these newspapers inside, I'm then going to finish off with an inside panel maybe even put a pocket so I can hide things in or maybe put the cards for the Mission Inspirations. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do on the inside yet, but just for today, I want to decorate the front and the back together. So this is probably going to be a quite a long and laborious process. So, so for some of this video, I'm probably going to end up um, putting it on fast forward and playing some music, but for the time being, what I want to do is I want to just put some glue, particularly around the edges. I'm using the Ranger collage glue stick for this. And then I can place this down over the top. So this is going to be the front. And I'm lining it up with that line at the top of the paper there so that I know that the newsprint is probably going to be almost, if not exactly, the right orientation. And then I'm going to push down, turn it over and then just give it a rub. Now it doesn't matter if I get any glue on the front because I will be sticking lots of other stuff down onto this anyway. So just for the time being. And then I'm now going to take the collage glue stick and run that around the edge like so. And this is where the, the triangle collage glue sticks come in really, really handy because they've got that straight edge side to them. So you can get right in there. I'm going to go right up to the edge. All the way. And then before I stick this down, I'm just going to grab some scissors. And I'm just going to snip into those corners. Like so. Actually, what I should have done is actually gone across the corner the exact opposite way. There you go, you see. It does help when you do shout out the screen. I do hear you. Now, there's a spooky thought. 
Okay, so I'm just going to fold that in. Just kind of push it in as tight as I can get. And then fold it over, push it down, turn it over. Of course, it's bound to rip a little bit, but that's okay. It is a vintage newspaper when all said and done, so you, <laughs> you've got to forgive it a little bit, and then like so. So that then is going to be the front base for my journal. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again for the back piece, but because you've already seen it once, I'm not going to make you sit through it twice. So I'm going to go away, do the second, do the back, and then I will be right back. It almost rhymed. Okay, so here we are. There's the front, here's the back. So I'll just flip them over so you can see. So that's what they will look like when they're bound together. And I'm going to be using book rings to do this. So a couple of mismatched book rings, which is going to kind of go with the theme of it all being kind of vintagey and all kind of knocked together so just gonna make sure I haven't put the holes in just yet um, <clears throat> but I will probably just push in on the back there just so I can see where they are without too much trouble I'm not going to go through here we go to the front not until the very end but at least I know where they are on the back so I now know that's my front and that's the back so, start off decorating the front. Now, like I said, I'm going to be using lots of bits and different pieces of ephemera on this. So, um, of course, I will be using, where possible, uh, grunging it up, dirtying it up with ink, but I'm not going to be using any water reactive inks. I'm going to be using permanent ink, so that's going to be the archival. So, my browns that I will use will be potting soil and tree branch. So I'm going to go away and grab those and then I'll be right back. So I've got my potting soil, I've got my tree branch and I have two brand new ink blending foams. So one of the processes is just kind of adding some grunge to this. So I'm going to start off just by adding lighter. So I'm going to start off with the tree branch. I'm just going to load up and then I will start just to add in some of that dirt and grunge around the edges first. So concentrate mostly on the corners because that's where the dirt would have collected and probably will collect. And just add in that colour, build it up. You can always go back and add in some more later if you're not happy with it or you don't think it's dark enough or grungy enough. And like I said, I wanted to use non-water reactive inks. Um, if you're a fan of the Distress Oxides and wanted to do a Distress Oxide kind of effect cover, you know, where you put it onto the your craft mat, then spritz it with water, then dab it in, so much better. I mean, you know, these things are all down to personal preference. I just didn't want any of mine to be um, reactive to water. So when the colours set, the colours set. And pretty much these things tend to um, dry the same colour they are as they're wet. There's not usually a huge difference between wet and dry, where sometimes the water reactive ones, you know, that there is a big, well, there's a huge difference with the distress oxide anyway. I think so. Okay, so I've gone round the edges there, and like I said, I've started off light. So if I want to now, I can grab that darker colour and really start to add in some of those darker, grungier tones in the corner. A bit more weathering. Maybe just a bit of a subtle difference. I mean, I could even go to black if I really wanted to, but not just yet. I will be adding other colours and splashes 
of blues and greens and that kind of stuff on these covers as well once I've got things stuck down but for the minute that's how I want it so I'm going to start again I want to make these all kind of grungy so I will be adding a bit of grunge and stuff to it now I may stick them down first and then go over with it you know it, it's it depends on how I feel and it's going to be a case of um, just do it and then see where it takes us later. So I'm just looking for something that I can maybe put under there. Yeah, I kind of like that to layer that up. So I'm going to start off by just layering down some of the more larger items that I want to stick down onto the front and I'm going to play it all by ear. It's literally just going to be a case of I'm going to put things down and then see how it all builds. So bearing in mind this is going to be the front so I want the book rings will go through here this side so I kind of want um, the area so like an L shape kind of cluster if you know what I mean. L shape this way and then a little bit towards the top. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm probably not even making much sense today, is I'm going to start off by, now then, is that glue stick nearly empty? I don't have another one somewhere. These myriad drawers underneath my computer screen. Glue sticks. Let's have a look. Glue sticks. No, not in there. Glue and adhesives. Right, I've got another glue stick here. Can use Mod Podge. You can use Matte Medium if you want to. I just don't want to today. For no other reason than I'm just not particularly in that kind of mood. So, bit of glue to the back, and again, I'm not particularly bothered if I get a little bit of liftage in the corners. So, if some of these items start to peel up, so much so the better. Just adds to that kind of effect, the old kind of effect. So the next, probably the next half hour or so is going to be me sticking down pieces of paper and just creating kind of clusters. That's probably going to be pretty boring for me to talk through and for you to listen to. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and carry on sticking stuff down but for you I'll put some music on and then go on to fast forward and then I'll join you when I've pretty much got to the point where I want to stop. Not necessarily finished, but to the point where I want to stop and then explain what I'm going to do next. So, with that being said, cue music. Okay, so I'm happy with the front of that for the time being. I do have something else that I want to add to it, but for the time being, 
I'm going to put this to one side and then I'm going to bring back the back cover and do a very very similar thing to the back cover that I've done to the front cover but because you've already seen me do this one and you've spent a while listening to the music I'm not going to make you sit through the entire process again this time on the back so I'll go away and do the back and then when it's complete when I'm happy with the amount of stuff that's on there then I'll join with you again at the end of it. So I think for the time being that will do for the back. So I'm not going to add any more. I haven't used up all of the pieces of ephemera that um, that I got out. So I'm just going to take that tree branch now and I'm just going to add in a little bit more of that darker colour. Just to kind of blend everything together. Just so it looks a bit more in keeping. Okay, so I'm happy with that so far. So let's bring the front back in. There's my front and there's my back. So that will be the front cover and then that will be the back. So I've done that in like an L-shaped cluster down the right hand side of the page on the back. So that is empty and then on this side my cluster goes that way but it's come across this way too because this is the front cover. So I want that heaviness there. The rings are going to go through these points here so I don't want those to interfere. So the next little thing that I want to do is I want to actually add on what this journal is for. So to do that I've got some of the Tim Holtz Alpha Chips and I've actually got all the letters to spell out for my mission inspiration. So I'm going to add these to the front if I can remember which order I was going to put them in. I'll just have to put them all out first of all and then we'll see whether or not I've got them in the right kind of order of where I want them to go on the page. So that spells out the word mission and then inspiration will go across at the bottom here. So I'm going to start that off about here because I know it's going to take up quite a, an expanse across there. Because it's a long word. I'm missing an I, I've got an extra M. Okay, I'll have to go and find one and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found one and I've swapped them over from that one to that one there. So, but I'm not sure that's where I actually want to put everything. I might actually bring the word mission and bring it down here. So it's kind of half and half on him. I 
think that's where I'm going to put it. Right, so to stick them all down, I'm going to use my Tombow Aqua liquid glue because it's got the fine applicator nozzle. So and I'm going to start over with the N and I am going to move it over right over there. And then stick that down. And again, this is going to take a while to stick all these individual letters down. So I'll crack on and I'll join you just as I'm sticking the last one back down again. Alright, so the last letter to go down is going to be the big eye. Well, not necessarily quite big, but you get the gist. Oh, there we go. So hopefully I've got that kind of or as straight as I possibly can do because all these letters are not necessarily cut perfectly straight. So that's going to need a few minutes or so to gel and to dry but I've purposefully used those alpha chips because they look like ransom note letters and I think that goes really well with the fact that um, it's kind of grungy and vintagey but like I said still haven't finished I'm gonna wait for that to dry it's for me it's 5 30 um, so my tummy's rumbling so I'm going to go get something to eat and then I'm going to leave these to dry and then I'll come back after I've finished eating and I'll carry on I'm back and full after a big lunch. So everything is now nice and dry. So the idea now is to add some paint into here. Now I don't want to go over it and paint over it because Ian had a look at it over while we're having lunch or just before we started to have lunch. And he says that he likes it as it is and I shouldn't really go over the top in adding too much distress and grunge and paint. And I kind of agree with him. So, but I do want to add some splatters because well, splatters, you know. So I thought about adding some splatters in two different colours. So I want to add some brown splatters. And for that, I'm going to use up some of my old vintage photo distress paint. But I also want to add in some yellow ochre splatters too. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to add some paint onto my craft mat. And as you can see, this is old distress paint there's not a lot left you've really got to coax it out so i'm really really getting my money's worth out of this add a little bit of water i have my fan brush i'm just going to mix those up and i'm going to add just a few sprinkles actually maybe not enough water Let's just get that a little bit runnier. I don't want to cover his face. Better. It's only going to be subtle <coughs> splatters, but because they're brown, so they will blend quite nicely into the background. Now I don't mind going over the inspiration bit. I'm going to grab a little tissue before it dries, because there's a little bit of a laminate on those letters, you can wipe them off. I don't really want to get any on his face. And then do some on. So let's move that out of the way. I feel a bit clumsy now. <coughs> Tad my water. And then, and I'm kind of going in a diagonal shape across the page. Okay, 
don't want to get any on his face because I quite like the look and I don't want to get any on the doggy because he's too cute. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so just clean that off. Wipe up that. Very quick and easy job. You see where all the glue is still stuck to the glass mat because the paint's just picked it up. Bring the front cover back in. And I think we can now say goodbye to Vintage Photo. And now I'm going to bring back in that yellow ochre. Put a blob of that on my craft mat. And pretty much do the same thing. Now I've just cleaned off my fan brush in a pot of water which is just off camera. There we go. And I'm going to add some water just on that craft mat. And just mix in that paint. Probably far more than we're actually going to need. And then once again we can add in some of those highlighty kind of yellow splatters. Now they are subtle because they blend into the background. There. Got one on his face there, we don't want. That's it. Let's cover his face up, maybe a couple on his jacket. And then grab that tissue again very, very carefully. And then just wipe it off the mission inspiration. And I think I'm done with that. I can always add bits and pieces later if I want to. If I feel that it needs something more, then I can always add to it. Not a problem. Let me just get this cleared up and then, because I know I'm going to end up putting my elbow in it. And then let's get the heat gun, get this paint dried off and I'll be right back. Those splatters are now all perfectly dry. Now normally I would have gone over this with some clear gesso to get rid of that shine but actually I quite like the fact that there's a little bit of a pop of shininess on the front cover amongst all of that matte. So I'm going to leave it this time. Um, I've got a little bit of shine just on those two characters there or three characters if or four characters really. Um, again I like that so I'm going to leave it. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to flip over and I'm going to add my inside front cover. Now to do that I have two sheets of graphic 45 paper and these are from the Master Detective collection which is the Sherlock Holmesy one. The skeletons and all the little clues and that kind of stuff throughout the entire of the pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these down so that they're just, just shy of eight inches by eight inches and then we're going to add them and glue them into the inside front cover and I'm going to do them both at once so we've got eight so the just before eight inches if you can just see that so that's probably one sixteenth just before which would be twenty centimeters 21 22 millimeters just just so just a tad there cut that and then flip it round and then cut it exactly the same again And we should have two squares to bring the back cover in that just fit. Look at that. Anybody think I measured? 
And let's just check the other one, the front cover. And again, slight variation in size on covers. So if I just remove a tiny, tiny amount of that one. <clears throat> Make sure I've got it the right way around. There. I know that perfect fit now. So obviously my front covers aren't exactly the same size, or my covers aren't exactly the same size, <coughs> but which is fine. Okay, so bring that back so we know that fits. Grab the glue. And again, it doesn't really matter which glue you use, actually, I'm going to use the mono, mainly because I know that I've got a little bit of wiggle room with this glue. I'm just making sure I've got plenty around where the holes are going to go. And then we'll just put a couple of beads. It's a fairly easy task. And then I can drop that back down and just wiggle it to make sure I've got it as the best fit I possibly can. Give it a smooth. I know Mr. Bentley is whining. He's missing his Auntie Sheila. Okay. There we go. Front cover. All nicely decorated. Now let's do the back. We'll do exactly the same thing. Well, you've seen me do this the once, so I'll just get on and do it and then just jump to the end. So there you go. The inside sheets are now stuck down. I've added in a couple of book rings. So I now have a mission inspiration folder or journal just ready for January in perfect timing. So I can now start to fill it with pieces of artwork. And I've still got some of the paper left over. So I could put maybe a couple of little pockets on the inside at a later date. So I will keep those handy if I decide to do that. There you go. There's my journal, already in waiting for the Mission Inspiration for January, which goes live on Saturday the 6th of January. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you. 